This is another video in my series on alternating current. In this video, I'm going to continue to look at average power flow, and as promised in my last video, I will develop the formula for average power in alternating circuits. In order to cover this topic, however, I require 15 minutes of video time, so sit back and enjoy this lesson and the graphics. You'll find that it is time well spent. You'll also find this topic along with others in my course entitled Power Analysis in AC Circuits. You can access this and my other courses on my stand store at this web address. I'm now going to have a re-look at these formulas again and this time as they have been rewritten or recalculated and the current is now going to be I am sine omega t. Now sine omega t or sine of a variable uh, angle goes from zero through to a positive one and then back through zero to a negative one and then repeats itself. So if we're multiplying sine omega t by I am, it'll go to a maximum of I am and down through zero and to a negative I am but it'll start at zero, as we've indicated here. Now, if we plot the voltage, the voltage is similar in that it's repeating itself, and it'll go to a maximum value of positive Vm and to back through zero and to a negative Vm. But because it's displaced by minus phi, or the phi without a subscript uh, colored in black, it's going to be delayed in starting up from its zero point, as indicated here, by an angle of minus phi. Now, we've seen these uh, calculations before, where we're going to calculate the, uh, the power, that the instantaneous power that's dissipated by these uh, two values, the current and the voltage. So I'm going to go through the Reader's Digest version of this a little bit fast because we've seen it before uh, for an inductor and it's very, very similar in, in the case of a capacitor, only the phase shift is a little bit different. But we're still going to get a instantaneous power whose frequency is double that of either the cur current or the voltage. And whenever the current is zero, the power is zero. Whenever the voltage is zero, the power is zero. And whenever the voltage and current have a like sign, in other words, they're both positive, then we have a positive voltage. And whenever we have the uh, current and the voltage of a different sign, then the power will be negative. It's shifted a little bit because of the fact that we're dealing with capacitors now instead of inductors, but the characteristics are the same as you see there. I'm going to take a closer look at this equation, and we did this before for the series RL circuit, but now we're dealing with a capacitor, and it's slightly different if you can remember. We had a positive black phi in the first equation uh, with the inductor. This time we have a minus phi that we're dealing with. But we're going to use the same trig identities and just follow through mathematically to the bottom and see what we come up with. So the first trig identity that we used was the sine x times sine y and we're going to let x equal omega t minus phi and we're going to let y equal omega t. And the portion that we're dealing with in that equation, I just recolored in blue as I did before so we can uh, see it a little bit better. And the equation now looks like this. And the two omegas in the first part of that right-hand side will cancel out because we've got a positive and a negative of the same thing. They will cancel out. And we have two omega t's, so we can just rewrite that as two omega t in the last portion of that equation. 
We can rewrite the equation now and it'll look like this. And now I want to look at just the last portion of the equation and again use the same trig identity we did before. The cos x minus y which is equal to cos x cos y plus sine x sine y. This time we're going to let x equal 2 omega t and y is going to equal 5. Now we've got to be careful here because uh, we have a minus phi, but we're using the trig identity cos x minus y, so I'm only going to, uh, I don't have to worry about the minus sign, I'm just going to make a substitute for phi. And I'm going to rewrite the equation, and again, I'm going to color the portion that I'm dealing with in blue, so we can follow it better. And our equation now will look like this. And if we collect like terms and rewrite the equation, and the other thing to keep in mind is that cos minus x is equal to cos plus x. That's another trig identity. And we can rewrite the equation getting rid of the minus sign for uh, the phi term in the first part of the equation. And the rest of the equation I'm just rewriting here. Now if I collect like terms, this is what I come up with. Vm I m over 2 times the quantity 1 minus cos 2 omega t times cos phi minus Vm I m over 2 times sine omega t times sine phi. Now this if you recall, and if you don't, you can go back and have a look at it. This is almost the same equation that we had for the inductor with the exception of this minus sign. And we're going to talk about that right away. I'm going to place the uh, phasor diagram in the upper right hand corner just for our reference as we go along. And keep in mind that this equation that we see here is describing the instantaneous power dissipated in the RC circuit. And for the moment I'm going to put the time domain current and voltages on the page and I'm going to superimpose the computer generated instantaneous power graph in the time domain. Now, if we look at just the left-hand portion of the equation, the Vm Im over 2, 1 minus cos 2 omega t times cos phi, it's the orange curve that you see on the diagram here. And it is twice the frequency, of course, of the, each of the uh, currents and or voltages. And the variable in the time domain, of course, is the t. The rest of the values of that portion of the equation are constant as long as we've got a constant AC voltage and a constant AC current. The variable portion of this uh, equation is the 1 minus cos 2 omega t, which is represented by the orange graph. Any change in the uh, VMIM over 2 or the cos phi will just change the magnitude of that curve. The second portion of the equation, VMIM over 2 sine 2 omega t times sine phi, is described with the black curve that I've drawn in the uh, slide here. And the variable portion is the time domain and I'm just bringing out the actual variable portion of that part of the equation which is sine 2 omega t. The rest of the uh, stuff around that variable portion of the curve is a constant. The VMIM is a constant, 2 of course is a constant, and sine phi is a constant. So I'm just bringing out the two uh, variable portions of the equation. 
And because it gets kind of confusing looking at all the rest of the curves that are there, I'm only going to plot the two portions of the equation, which is the VMIM over 2, 1 minus cos 2 omega t times cos phi, which is in orange. And the VM, or I should say the minus VMIM over 2 times sine 2 omega t times sine phi which is in black. What we are looking at here, just as a quick reminder, is the instantaneous power consumption of the RC circuit. And I've drawn it in the time domain here in the blue curve that I you've just seen uh, superimposed over the other two curves. But most of the time, as I have said previously, we are looking for average power. That's what your house is, uh, is being um, uh, built on as far as the power utility is concerned. So the meter on your house is actually reading average power. So if we look at the average power of that equation and we take the variable portions of it, which is the cos 2 omega t and the sine 2 omega t, they will average to zero because any sinusoidal function will average to zero over a long period of time. And a long period of time is longer than a second. And if we average cos 2 omega t over a long period of time, it will average out to zero, leaving just the one inside that square bracket. And if we average out the sine 2 omega t, it will average out to zero, meaning the second portion of the equation is zero. So if we now look at what is left uh, after averaging everything, we now have the average power flow of, or the average power consumption of the RC circuit, and those portion, this is what's left av after we average everything out. So the average power consumption is Vm Im over 2. And remember that the voltage Vm is the maximum voltage of the sinusoidal wave and the Im is the maximum current of the sinusoidal current. And that is all over 2. And it's times cos phi, which is the phase angle between the current and the voltage. And everything in that equation is constant as long as the voltage and the current, the AC quantities, are constant, we will have a constant average power flow, which basically looks like it might even be equivalent to a DC quantity. However, the, just it suffice to say that the average power consumption is given by VMIM over 2 times the cosine of the phase angle between the current and the voltage. Before concluding this video, I want to make you aware of another huge sale that is coming available today. EcoFlow will be offering benefits worth up to $3,000 on some of their products. You can get $500 off the Delta Pro 3 and get $300 off an extra battery for it. You can also obtain $300 off EcoFlow Smart Home Panel 2. Furthermore, you can extend the savings when you purchase uh, the Delta Pro 3. You can get a free 400 watt portable solar panel. These are just a few of the items that are on sale. To look at the full extent of the sale, simply go to this web address. As a reminder, all the letters in this web address are lowercase, and not to be confused, this letter is a lowercase l. This video is part of my electrical technical information series. In this series, I'll be covering essential topics to help you understand electrical systems. Be sure and stay tuned as I will also from time to time be reviewing electrical products that in my opinion are worthy of paying attention to. This address will give you access to the supplier 
of aforementioned products. And it is also the connection to obtain a free copy of my 50-page electrical power crib sheets, which will serve as a quick reference of technical calculations that you may need. Also, by providing me with your name and email address, I'll be able to forward you information to connect you with electrical products and to provide you with notifications of more electrical training videos.